This was the place where the sun was born. The Kadiakers paddled 30 kilometers to Isla del Sol, where they planned to meet archaeologist Dr. Johann Reinhardt. Dr. Reinhardt has gained international recognition for locating sacrificed Inca mummies on the tops of high mountains in the Andes. Isla del Sol is the mythological origin of the Inca. The Indians on Isla del Sol today are direct descendants of the Inca and live much like their ancestors did a thousand years ago. Dr. Reinhardt was in the town of Chala to give a donation to a local museum that housed some of his discoveries. Years ago, he helped build the museum to preserve the rich heritage of the local people. In the late 80s and early 90s, Dr. Reinhardt did extensive diving in Lake Titicaca, looking for Inca gold. He studied various ancient myths and legends and questioned the island natives, hoping to uncover some clue about where to look. Eventually, his persistence paid off. A rare Tiwanaku gold medallion was found, as well as small gold Inca human figurines inside of stone containers. In addition to the gold, numerous other silver and pottery artifacts were found on a reef next to Koa Island. There is little question that the underwater ridge was a principal place of worship. Current day legends call the reef the Altar of Viracocha, Viracocha was the creator deity of the Incas and father of Tunapa, the very god the Cadillacers followed to the Uni Salt Flats. Johan took the Cadillacers on a tour of the Chincana ruins, where he recounted the legends surrounding the birth of the Inca. Well, what we're coming through here are a series of structures that are all interconnected. They call it a labyrinth. I actually got the name Chincana uh, from that. And they're not 100% sure what this was, but most of them think it was the separate rooms for the virgins that were either going to be sacrificed here or, or the majority of them would have been actually weaving. And of course, they're fairly young when they're chosen, between seven and eight, taken away, and then later might be selected either for sacrifice or to be chosen for uh, concubines mm -hmm. some of the Inca nobles, or they just stay forever weaving. This was one of the most sacred places in the entire Inca Empire, and of course from the sacred rock is where they say they originated. So when these girls were sacrificed, were they in their finest clothes? But not only their finest clothes, they were in the finest clothes. There would have been clothing done especially for the sacrifice. It doesn't look like much, but this is the famous sacred rock. It's about 80 meters long. It doesn't look like much to us because there isn't all the trappings that the Incas had on it. They had incredible textiles that were laid out over it. And they say that the main sun idol was actually here. And that this is the hole that the sun came out of. You know, that the Incas, of course, are descendants of the sun. So this is the origin of the Incas. So is this what I think it is here? What's that? Place to sunbathe? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so here we are. I hesitate to approach this with you. <laughs> A little sacrificial altar. Yeah. Um, grab a sheep. We'll, we'll do a substitute yeah. offering. There we go. Well, that's what they were doing, of course, in, in Inca times, or still today in some places, uh, sacrificing yamas. The story that we have in, from a document of 1621 is that the Incas would come on up and at the altar, when they were going to sacrifice uh, a human a child, a boy or a girl, they would take a stone and just hit their uh, head with a sharp blow, and obviously that would, that would do it. Well, you would hope it would do it. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a bit of pain. But, you know, as far as for dying, uh, this is about as nice a place to die as there could be. Uh, here's something you might be interested in. Uh, see these shapes here? Yeah. Well, they say that these are the footprints of the sun god. Huh. Is he coming or going? Well, it looks like he's heading towards the sun temple. Oh, Makes sense, doesn't it? Look and you can, uh, yeah, this is probably the best outline here of the these two here, showing uh, 
what his foot looked like. I wonder where the toes were. Didn't have much of an arch, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. The Cadillacers asked Johan to sail out to the reef near Koa Island where he discovered the gold artifacts. The reef is underwater and usually hard to find. Some legends say that it constantly moves around. There's a reef you can see out there. A uh, little bit of the, the waves ch chop a little bit. You can see a little bit of white. Uh, we dove around virtually everything you can see here, all these different islands in the course of about five years' work looking for sites, but this is the only one that really had important offerings at it. The actual reef itself goes for about 80 meters, about 260 feet or so, so that's just one small part of it. But that means that the lake level now is, is much lower than it was when we were diving in the 80s and early 90s. The Cadillacers and Johan actually located the reef without difficulty because of the low level of the lake. Arlene stepped out of the Cadillac and stood on the water like some unsinkable ancient goddess. And so it was that Johan had been able to prove that some legends are based on fact and that in his case there was real gold at the end of the rainbow.